All right, so getting started, I got my keystrokes being displayed in the bottom, so uh, I'm gonna try to not say them as much. You know, just talk freely. So we'll take this cube, sphere cast. You know, I love this thing. I uh, started out using it for eyes, but after a while, it just became a good sphere maker. So the hard choice is going between four and five with control to choose sub diffs. You know, we're gonna go a little bit higher. And I was about to hit auto smooth on it, but I don't have to because box cutter will do that for you the moment you begin cutting. So this cut, I'm gonna just use circle and then hold control, oh, sheesh. And um, you know, catch that snapping dot in the center, but I'm gonna shift it to live and then shift lock onto the main, which should allow me to bring another circle in using the, um, Shift active. Let's see, did I set it up? No. So up here, if we turn on active only, we can use the first object as a snapping point for cutting this object. And voila, you know, just a little extra cut there. And we can still adjust this one, of course. Making it as deep as we want and We'll look at this from top view and cut the cutter like so. Actually, let's select the right object and I'm using view align because I want to cut some little angles in here, but the auto smooth isn't going to catch it. So we're going to have to lower it to you know, I was about to jump to 15, but we'll put it on 28. And of course, mirror. And look at this from top view. Actually, we're still in view align mode, so let's do a few more cuts that way. We'll cut a notch here. And we can also take advantage of view align too. Just know that our shape is direction only um, align you know with the view it, it's good to know sometimes especially when you want to do a cut like this and it's not aligned to any surface it's just a cut that just goes in so today i'm on the um, amd computer i've just been jumping back and forth between this one and the nuck because they each drive me insane in their own ways but first world problems you guys um, one of the main reasons I also wanted to do this particular video is um, uh, someone that I know like PWK is going through an issue you know one of the big things that um, I feel I could per personally try to impact in my life is homelessness it's something I ponder often and so I'm uh, particularly connected to that particular cause and he's going through an issue of the, the same thing so I'll be putting the link to it in the description um, check him out he's uh, one of our fellow users um, real big into NPR rendering so it's always been something that um, I've respected about him is his love of NPR it's like wow dude you really love NPR is um kind of what I took away from meeting him but nonetheless gotta help him so right here we're just gonna extrude it out I could have uh, added solidify but let's just array this out using the hops array gizmo you know eventually I want to be able to click this button and just drag to accelerate the amount that it comes out but some people ask why we have the uh, classic array in here still this one and it's because this one is actually very fast and nimble on the mouse hand at least in my opinion so I'm gonna take this shape um, we'll go to layer 2 and we're gonna bring back our cylinder and we'll select this and slash and of course always um, got to select the wrong things in the wrong order in fact let's take both of these in local and talk for a moment 
and we'll just use control numpad slash wrong selection order did it again sorry about that sometimes I forget so it cut the piece off but we see that it didn't affect it right and that's because the boolean is not in the right order but it is the right order that we need for this particular experiment so right here I'm just going to go into NGON, turn on view align and we're just going to do a little cut in here of course holding control is nice and also you could see that when I undid it it messed up what I had going on here so let's actually see if we can get that back let's redo I've been undoing and redoing quite a bit in 2.8 lately to try to trigger crashes and see, just ensure stability. Like box cutter is actually doing pretty good at this moment, at least for me. Um, I know Mac was kind of rough for a minute, but you know, talk to Steve Jobs, we sorted it out. Here I added a mirror, but the mirror is in the wrong order. So we'll just make sure it is here. We want the mirror to be We want this balloon to be first, then this mirror. Uh, it's gonna get a little bit complicated, but I'll try to end its pain quickly. And just with sword off, you can see that, you know, manually dealing with the sword of this stuff is not the funnest activity. In fact, which one is this? This one's the difference. We want the difference of this one we want both of these actually before array. That's the problem, sorry. Had a um, brain lapse there. So we can take this piece, mirror it over, take it, mirror it over, and let's have a little fun with this. So what I'll do is snap my cursor right here, shift A, add an empty, um, you know me, I like my Spherical empties, except that one's too big. We'll scale it down for our needs. And we'll take the array. I know this is gonna be completely unrealistic, but it'll still look good. Um, and we're just having some fun here. And we'll use the offset object of this empty. Let's apply the scale. Let's apply a rotation. There we go, we're all set. So I can press G, Y, and bring it back, but also send it forward. However, I see that it's making that cut look bad, or maybe the cut itself was bad. So let's go to layer two, Alt H, unhide. Cutters will always be uh, re-hidden after using this due to some glitches we had to make a sacrifice to the devil to find a workaround for. But we just want to make sure we're clipping that front. Maybe something like that. And then let's look at it. Oh, what's this? Yeah, that's what we want. And it's gonna have some little visual glitches because we're animating a Boolean that's slicing it to make it fit. So we can actually stretch it pretty thin here. But looking at the viewer retention of the last spherical video, I was like, sheesh, I should do a sequel real quick because there's actually a lot of fun that could be had making these uh, particular shapes here. I still have view a lot cutting on, so it's like no holds barred. You know, I like cutting things like that in and then following it up with a circle, not that circle. So I have to turn off view align snapping in order to hold control and find the uh, center dot. And there's no center dot because it's the ingon face, so we'll just pull out the circle here. I mean, wherever that ingon dot is, we're not gonna find it. So we'll just send this along. So a lot of people ask about our dots and the way that they've been designed. And actually, 
I see that I forgot to turn sort back on. When you start cutting on one side and it's not appearing, watch this. The moment I cut, it's just gonna pop over because of the way things are. However, this is a thing that I also ponder and hope to expand upon. Um, I'm always contemplating ways that we can stall booleans in the list and have them be omitted from the sorting like via via hacks at this time. You know, usually it starts with a hack before I suggest, hey guys, maybe we should try automating this. But once I can figure it out, you know, it'll, it'll definitely be a, a powerful tool. However, at this time, the sort works pretty good. The next level, of course, is bringing up the modifier helper. But, you know, the question I always ask when people want to resort in the middle of the modal is, you know, why? But, and also how, how are we going to do it, make it out of the box fun and easy for users? Because, I mean, you know, Blender 2.8 has uh, changed some of the things that I once held as roles in a previous Blender, like uh, having no UI. You know, I can press T and get rid of T panel, but I still have all the stuff at the top. So, and I love this top bar, by the way, you know, Blender actually wants us to have no top bar. You know, they just want it like that, which that's not bad. But if I go to full screen, you guys will complain about being ultra, ultra wide. So I got to record inside of a little box of this humongous monitor. So, We'll just bring this out, but instead of making it a cut, we're gonna press Z and make this an inset because inset's a classic, you know, inset's always been the most unstable of our cutters because it's so odd. And making it live is just a victory unto itself. Of course, when you have something like that going on, it's all worth it. I mean, if the geometry's wacky, inset's gonna get wacky if you, ever want to understand how inset works, shift it to live. And when you look at the shapes left behind, it will become fairly obvious how it works. And as a result, it also tells you um, the type of issues you can encounter with it as well. Because if you have crazy overlapping geo, things that wouldn't work in 3D printing, then that aren't gonna work with solidify and high quality normals, then it's a recipe for disaster. So. Um, took a cube, sphere cast, added some sub devs, but you know me, I like to apply these mods and also I like to redirect the flow. So spacebar, poke, alt J, and we'll leave it where it is, but we'll add a modifier wireframe. I used to actually double tap I to inset if you look at my older videos, but this way right here is far superior. So even though we have this Wow, I just created a microphone, you guys. Hey guys, Master Zion wants <laughs> Sorry. All right, uh, just trying to have some fun here. Um, what I'm gonna do is draw a box and press B, bevel all the corners. I guess not, you know, I'm probably choking this this computer out. It's my curse, I, I'm, I'm the... Um, trying to think of a famous domestic abuser It'd be a terrible joke sorry but I'm, I'm that guy of computers so after slicing it we, we see that we have our little mesh here we can just mirror that to the other side because that's the only area we want to have a meshing and the reason I put this on an empty is because I want to reveal lights underneath in honor of like PWK you know like a pun on his name he won't find it funny but he inspired a masterpiece as I look through his page. Enough to make me want to do a video to um, get you guys also into it. So, Alt H, this is all that we have. We press one, this is all we have. It's just a nice sanity check because I'm gonna hide some elements and kind of model in here. You know what's crazy is, even though custom shape is like the newest, hottest shape on the block, um, my custom shape quota, I've just been falling behind. And also, we're gonna have to apply the scale. One of the annoying glitches of box cutter at this time is that unapplied scale 
will affect the cutters as well. Even without, sheesh, where's my top bar? Only a crazy person would get rid of their top bar. All right, so where is it at? Parent shape. Parent shape isn't even on, but just a heads up that if your scale is unapplied, which Bevel is designed to apply scale if you be with on an object. I mean, this object obviously is not beveled, but you know me. We're just cutting some randomness in here. Using some obscure tools you know one of the things i like about the dots is how um you know they kind of are a sandy check for repeat shape because they like disappear whenever you repeat the shape which is uh, i think unintended but it's something i contemplate all the time while i'm looking at it. i'm like wow um not having feedback on the repeat shape can work can be mitigated by the uh dots being hidden which is far simpler than coming up with a system for it i was thinking of something far more complex for dealing with repeat shape but i think we could put that energy towards um something a little more epic speaking of which you know in the in the labs the next box cutter is uh getting ever so closer so right here i'm going to draw a box but i'm going to press a and we'll just bring this gray box down and one day we'll have back our system where when the shapes intersect there's a dotted line in between them like in 2.79 but we don't have that now and it does drive me nuts because, I mean, Graybox wasn't, I wasn't using Graybox like this until 2.8, but just small, small things. There are things I, I contemplate all the time. So with this gray box, I'm gonna select this, shift select this, and while holding, I believe shift, actually, let's try it again. Did I just cut the wrong cube in? All right. So we select this, we select the shape we want. And we have the Boolean added. So what I need to do is definitely update the Booleans um, with the uh, tool tip because otherwise it'll be easy to forget, but this is just the uh, whip area of the um, give and take system. So I'll switch over to custom shape, press C, press H, and now we have it back. And of course we want to undo hiding this custom box and we'll apply to scale and then press C, hide it. And we can just draw this piece out. And I do love, you know, repeating things and seeing how it works out because, you know, if I go and cut this into this area, it's going to be taken up by the next cutter. By the next time I cut it, that's going to also be a part of it. You could see it right there popping up. So that's an interesting observation. Like, I mean, I do want to have some procedural cutters made like i think that's going to be the next big thing for blender a lot of people have thrown their hat in the procedural ring and i got some ideas as well i mean a lot of these tools i think are just us trying ideas like i got this idea and also look at this these circles skewed unacceptable too so we go here and we actually have to rehide everything. I'm just going to scale that out. So this goes to show that uniform scaling is on the list. I mean, you know, everything in time, of course. Um, you know, I try to chill out, you know, it's important you guys. Otherwise I get super obsessed with box cutter and hard ops, you know, to obsess. Uh, you know, I get people that write and they're like, uh, you know, you put out too many updates, but to retort to that, I'll say, I haven't put out an update in like a month. So, I mean, if anything, you guys should start to miss us by now. So I'm just scaling this thing to fit. 
and we're just going to go to this layer borrow this cutter select this slash and we have what we need there and so the next thing is um you know maybe some light arrays down here i want it where it'll slide back and just reveal like some lights so let's use we we'll use circle you know i never make with circle for some reason but it's there and it's a thing and also anytime i draw with make and it just works out like you see here just makes me happy because internally i complain very heavily about all of the glitches that users report i mean i take very every one of them seriously probably the wrong guy to be in a plug-in game unless you want the best because that's all i'm obsessed with so continuing on we'll take this mirrored across totally not trying to sound like a dickhead um but i mean you know the, the question i always ask is how can it be better so we have that piece and it fits and it's not penetrating the outside also listen to some music at the same time as i'm working i'll press alt h bring it all back press one go to layer one and so we'll be like what you got in that ball sir oh i see and then they'll pulse up um and maybe right here we want some sort of pattern so while we're slashing using the same circle to make everything fit today you know i think i taught myself something over the course of this video and that is slash isn't so bad in that respect but we do have some improvements to make with it um more on that to come so we'll select this piece go to layer one select this piece slash and we'll delete that leaving us with just the hollow piece of what we once were and let's actually apply booleans with the apply modifiers button I use that thing all the time. It's like C sharp without the bevel. Sometimes C sharp is just a little too, too much. I feel I'm, I'm almost freer not using it sometimes, even though at the very end, I'm like, sheesh, I got to C sharp this thing and face all of my edges. Every mistake I ever made, got to face it. Let's see what the auto smooth angle actually is. It's, still, it's just 20. So I didn't even have to get all the way to 15. We'll mirror it across. But we'll mirror it across again because we don't have a double axial mirror yet. AR is probably going to hear that watching this video and be like, sheesh, <laughs> why do we need that? <laughs> That's like his first question always. Why do we need that? I love it. Like, um, we do. Users also need it. So we'll draw a few cuts here you know i haven't laser cut this whole video like i should just laser cut just a tad so let's bring this back out to here and that's looking good let's um add a curve you know the camera and light drive me nuts just get out of here guys you know, the new meme is now deleting the camera. You know, I keep the cube, delete the camera. We're 24 minutes into this, so hopefully you guys are having a good time here. And let's take this light and actually give it a material. Here's a bug that definitely bothers me. Because of the redesign of the helper to make it unique once again, we lost the ability for materials to automatically assign. So we'll be getting that back in no time, but as 2.8 progresses, you know, we're just glad that things are finally stabilizing with it because, you know, making something one time is great. Making something multiple times, not so great. It, it, as a result, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be less crazy about bugs because it's like, sheesh, we are lucky to just survive you guys.
So we'll put one of these light rings here. And, you know, for this right here, we're going to need to first join them together and then we'll just convert it to mesh. And I'm going to actually just use box cut to just get rid of the middles because that's just not going to work. And let's turn it into the render mode, see what we got. Once again, this is a file I haven't saved in. It's one of those um, Jesus take the will situations. Um, you know, like a test of stability. If, if box cutter and blender just crashes, you know, serves me right. Should have learned a lesson there. But, you know, people write, they're like, I have problems with stability. You know, first response is using a Mac. <laughs> Uh, because, yeah, Macs are just not looking so good. I mean, unless you're getting the all new Mac Pro, you know, for $6,000, you'll get, um, was it 12 cores? Pass. I got 32 in this Threadripper. But it's for upgrading later. Yeah, I bet. I bet you want me to keep paying on this thing forever. Get out of here. So, once you shade this thing black, you're done. I mean, it's a black ball. It's done. So, also want to take a moment to give a shout out to uh, Chip, who made this glass shader that I'm always using. You know, we'll put a sphere around this. You know, just take a cube and sphere it. You know, that's going to be a term now. Just no sphere. Just, and we'll go to Kit Ops, and I'm going to go to Chip's glass shader, which you can get on his camera free shader and we'll put it on here we won't be able to see anything and that's because we don't have refraction on and now we can see through it but it's like way too shiny so as always I'm sure chips gonna hate this part but I always go in and just lower the brightness and adjust the curve Try to get this thing to chill out and then finally at the end to uh, really make it painful i just change it to additive and bam you've created the <laughs> master zeon chip collab glass shader where i just change it into being additive and everything's fine so we'll, we'll get out of render mode because i really am not trying to test my luck here but let's take this cube and we could c sharp it we could C-sharp it and lose everything non-destructive, or we can just add a bevel to it, which is what I truly want. So we'll add a bevel and just dial it back. But what's the auto smooth? The auto smooth is 28. And so I've been thinking about this idea of making a driver that connects the auto smooth to something called the prime bevel. And it would just make sure that both of them were locked down just like this. And then, of course, the next modifier to make this look right is the weighted normal. And once we get that, we got our shading back. But the alternative is on the bevel, we could activate hardened normals. But hardened normals will make the boolean look a little strange during the intermediate cut process. So that's something that you can actually choose to turn off right here in the modifier helper. So WN stands for weighted normal being added when you C sharp and HN stands for the hard and normals being toggled on whenever you add a bevel modifier or jump into C sharp with angle and weight being how you want your C sharp uh, workflow to go once you begin advancing this. But I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with being off the reservation now. So you'll notice that a lot of stuff I've been doing lately has just been more non-destructive and also um, what's the other part? They're more non-destructive, but also, um, I'm not jumping them up through the states because working neutrally is also a thing, but it's not something that we focused on in the past. So it's been interesting to see how, how good we actually are at this without even trying. And then with putting effort into it, I believe it could be improved multifold, but this is something we also debate internally. So I bring in a plane. It's a bird. It's a plane. You know, speaking of which, after I post that meme, I found out there was um, a bird nest on the balcony 
and that's why I could hear all these birds. So mystery solved there. So we'll put a stand on it, but we want to go to, well, we don't even have a, a cutter for this. So we'll just make one sphere cast. Difference. And let's go to layer two and we can actually scale this in to get it just right. So first thing I'll do box, box your socks off, you know, you know me, I like to put a little leg on my, on my model. So under add modifier, we'll hit solidify, just expand that out just a little bit more. Also the music stopped. Better come back. I'll jump back on the Parasite Eve soundtrack. I've just been so obsessed with it since I had watched this YouTube video where they were talking about the music. I was like, you know, the music in that game was good. It was real good. But the game was not so good. It was okay. But the music made it memorable. <laughs> it's like Final Fantasy VIII. You know, Final Fantasy VIII is such a boring or uh, such a boring Final Fantasy, but. You know, all the people that are diehard about it are like, dude, you get the junctions, man. You get those junctions, and it's great. It's like, but, you know, even if you game shark the game to go level 99, the monsters upgrade with you. So every fight is a fight for your life in the game. It's like, it's, I don't know about this system. You know, my favorite Final Fantasy is 9, in case anyone was ever curious. You know, they had the life of tree, and... Queen Brahm, Zidane, Vivi, you know, it's just a classic. So, I mean, what else we got to talk about? Uh oh, I did, and it hung. I thought that was it, you guys. I thought this video was over. I was like, okay, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. But Blender hung in there. So, and this is on the AMD computer, too. So, you know, I used to call this the God computer, but. I just don't know about this computer, man. It went from being like Rick to being like Carl. I just, that's probably the most polite way to put it. Carl. So continuing on, um, we'll just do a cut here. Just a little notch. Yeah, I don't know what's with me and notches. Also, why is this very solid? All right, I'm not even gonna ask about that. Oh wait, it's an insert. One, two, three. All right, we'll just get rid of that. Sorry about that badness, you guys. You know how we do it, it gets wild. Also, that cut did not go through. So I cut it again, which probably isn't the best decision, but it worked, so that's fine. Um, you know, what would be cool is uh, give this like a, like a mesh piece. In fact, let's um, go to layer two, alt H. You know what, I do not need that here. Let's go to layer two. You don't need that sort of negativity in your life, guys. Um, also, want to give a shout out to um, whoever downvoted me. You know, you inspired me to um, come back and do a follow up video. I was like, sheesh. You know, even my haters are getting in there quickly. Like, I gotta work harder, you know. been watching these um, like documentaries about prison and you know the um, the worst torture for a person is silence you know to invalidate their existence you know you put them in these cells they give them no one to talk to because these people are crazy and stabbing people with tools that they're making 
and it's very bad. But, you know, they torture them with uh, isolation, you know, it's like even these hardened criminals, you know, need, need human interaction. And same thing with, um, with words, you know, like, um, if someone's disrespecting me. I try to not respond because validating its existence is, um, empowering. You know, it's like why trolls, um, have such fun, you know, it's because it, your existence is proven, you know, you, um, and also, you get to see the person, you know, at their most raw, you know, enraged, losing their mind, you know, threatening to call the police, just losing all form, you know. It's um, just interesting. Sorry to go on a tangent there, but what do you want me to talk about? You want me to talk about this curve I put here? Yeah, guys, curve. It's here. I could be watching E3 2019. But I started watching it and it was uh, Bethesda and Microsoft. So I'm out, you guys. So, what else did they talk about? I went and watched X Men Dark Phoenix. It was terrible, which is why I went to see it. You know, sometimes a movie's so bad, you just have to see it, you know. So, we'll mirror this on the X. But we'll also mirror it on the Y, all right? We'll press RZ and hold control to rotate this 45 degrees precisely. We'll select both of these and actually mirror it across on the Y. And we'll select it again, actually mirror it across on the X. And this thing looks like some like futuristic launch pad. I mean, this one's actually a little crazier than the previous ones. Also, I would say that this test of uh, blender stability, this tool test. Okay, I was looking at the wrong one. I was like, these things are not moving right. But this test of uh, stability with the tools has went successfully. I mean, you know, this is how I start my day. Just wake up, update blender, test the tools, make sure everything's working. And then from there, I can um, proceed with telling people in support emails, Blender is definitely working. Box cutter, definitely working. You know, I get a lot of people that write me and they're like, listen, there's a bug. Box cutter's broken. It's like, oh yeah, what version of Blender? Oh, that's what it is. Story of my life. But, you know, I was thinking earlier that I've been completely warped by technical support as uh, my experience, like as a result of handling people for so long. Now when people write with support issues, I'm like, well, I need you to complete these troubleshooting steps and then from there, give me this information in order to automate the process. So it's become pretty streamlined. I can't complain. Uh, we'll call this Chrome and you know, I just realized why am I using this when I could be using the chip material pack. You know, I got the inside scoop with chip also. I pick up everyone's product, so I'm like everyone's biggest fan. Even the people downvoting me. Got your products too, bro. Um, so continuing on, they seem to be a little uppity on, on the legs. You know, I wish they were more, more relaxed. Also, I almost want to cut a different segment out, do some stuff, but let's uh, slap some materials on this thing. Also, let's decide, make a hard decision here. Well, before we make a hard decision, let's save it. We'll save it and then we'll incrementally save it because we're about to go destructive. And the reason for that is, you know, when it comes to this stuff, there's always like a, it, I love this part right here I'm about to show you. I, I don't love that I have to apply subserve and apply cast first before it applies all these bullets because otherwise it will cause a severe issue. 
and to explain it in depth, it happened in my last video, is that if I would have C-sharped it, it would have applied each boolean while keeping the subsurf. And if you have a subsurf active, along with all these booleans, it's just gonna look terrible. Uh, it's important to not be subdividing on booleans unless your geometry's been somewhat corrected a little bit for it. So right here, we have this thing that's set up non-destructive, jumping into C-sharp. Nothing happened, right? No, wrong. Everything happened. Nothing was disrupted. I love that. I love that there's a, a seamless transition to jump this from a non-destructive object to a C-sharp object. Like these are things that truly matter to me. So I'm gonna press P, separate by loose parts, and hope that there's not a piece on the other side as well. And now that we have the ability to separate things out, we can Just add some different materials in here and start breaking up these surfaces. In fact, like I said, why am I using, um, why am I making materials when I could just go to, say, Chips Chrome Matte? And I believe if you hold control, it will just put the material on it. And, you know, I, I work with Chip a lot. and. You know, whenever I see a screen, I'm always looking at his materials. I'm like, yeah, that's metal's pretty cool. I should um, give that thing a shot. So, you know, just like I'm always angry with him for um, not giving hops a try, always trying to do everything manually by hand. Um, so am I always just creating bland BS placeholder materials because, you know, in the end, the um, the result is always there. You know. But let's have a little fun with this today. So we, we talked about light. We uh, played with some chip materials. So let's say I hate this line, and I do. I could press backspace to backspace on the Ingon, but I know Ingon will never be good enough for you guys until it's where it used to be and then beyond that. And I see that I can't take it to the levels that I want it to until we get it back to where it was. But believe me, it's coming and it's closer than you expect. Um, so we'll select both of these materials. And you know, this thing's looking pretty good. So this is um, three underscore one. And it's not even three underscore one. It's more like 50 underscore one because I was previously naming them after decal machine, but I uh, stopped doing that because I had been doing a little more box cutter experiments with it before jumping into DM. But I try to separate out my files by uh, which application I'm promoting actively. So using the SCH kit, you know, gotta give another shout out to the SCH kit. This thing's free and awesome. And I personally made the uh, part that you put in decal machine. So, you know, you know me, put the folder in the folder. You know, if you put the folder in the folder, you're a smart man, you're a good man. So I love putting the 60 there for some reason. But also, um, these decals, I suggested the words on them and the person who designed them SCH, also known as the legendary Sir Charles, uh, actually took him in his own direction with, with the keywords that I gave him. So that's also why I'm forever going to be in love with these decals. Like, um, you know, I gave him everybody's 3D name is like code names, and those are also decals um, as well. Just really epic. Like, um, you know, it'll really come in handy for branding later. Uh, when I'm needing to show that I'm a competent person. So we want to put a few more of these labels in here. And, you know, Blender still hasn't crashed. I feel like I use it pretty hard. As you can see, every decal I bring in, I want to have a little shot on it. And we'll just lift that off the surface just a tad. And the next thing is using some decal machine classics. Uh, I see that 
half of my decal packs from the other PC are not actually here. Uh-oh. There we go, we're back. There's a slight lag. I thought this was the end of things. And you see it just looks terrible. Terrible. Just looks terrible. Until you go into perspective. It's like, whoa, whoa. So, I love decal machine. Still one of my favorite tools, especially because you know, putting screws and stuff on surfaces is just annoying. It's mundane. Um, I personally, you know, I don't mind doing it, but I know that every time I put a screw on a surface that there's going to be some sort of surface distortion that I'm going to have to deal with later on or risk, depending on the scale and the amount of geo, you know, geometry is kind of complicated in a way. We're, we're like geometry hackers because we're we're trying to create a piece of art out of the most minimal amount of effort but you know when i first got in a blender i used to um enjoy getting on and working every day and making stuff but over time it just became apparent that it's just hard as hell and i mean not even hard as hell just a lot of work right like um you know, my friends would be like, hey, can you make a video for this song I did? It's like, well, that's going to be um, 8,000 keystrokes. Actually, I lost all my decals. There we go. I'm back. And I just wanted to do the double mirror on this thing. But, you know, people would be like, hey, I want you to do this thing for me. It's like, um, you know, what you're asking for, that, that little idea. God killed it, you guys. How did I do it? I did it undoing decal machine. Not not to uh, throw dirt on it, but I, I was. Oh, actually, wait, no, I was undoing the mirror. So something with the mirror uh, caused an issue there. So still interesting. We were in the final phases. You know, when you're working around in the render, it's um dangerous. Open. We'll recover auto save, and we'll just see. How much Blender loves us. Okay, we lost a few layers of decals, so I'm gonna control S save because we're definitely looking better than we did before we saved. And we're just gonna do that again. You know, one thing about me is if Blender crashes, they're not gonna, they're not gonna win, you know. Like you're not gonna get me to go sheesh that one looked terrible let's try that again machine himself was telling me on twitter that um you know if you hover over the surface and you press d it'll actually put the decal there like if you hover here you press d your decals there so old habits always die hard for me i just Cannot stress that, you know. Um, whenever I'm doing tutorials, I always take into consideration or try to explain that, um, you know, I use Blender. Well, oddly, I mean, I don't know if there's a right or wrong way to. Also, let's look at that. Let's actually go under shading. And we're going to just <coughs> change this to three. And then go back to layout and keep working. So yeah, it just was looking a little off. And with decals, really can um, just finish the job, you know, to quote Master Chief. I mirrored it across the wrong part. Doesn't matter. And this will just give us some stuff to, um, you know, roll our camera across. Um, I must apologize to Mr. Radioactive for not showcasing his decal set in this, but I'm just not on that, um, I'm not on that computer. So I'll need to, uh, resync my decals. Like I've been working on an idea for how to do a video showing you guys how to sync your decal sets across multiple systems and maintain it because you know there's a lot of people making decal sets and i definitely want to promote and help that industry grow but also there's got to be some sort of management system um, to make this easier 
I mean, I've been contemplating it. Like, you know, what if we made some sort of um, Gumroad front end that would allow people to log into that and it would actually connect to their account and download and install and update their plugins just through like something like the Blender Updater. You know, the tool so great. Maybe it could work for add-ons as well, but you know, it's just an idea I'm rolling around. So if you're into what does application development, um, before a payday, holler at me. So continuing on, definitely Windows, by the way, you guys start out with Windows. Can't go wrong there. My favorite OS. You have to watch the proxy use Linux and all he runs into or it <laughs> just strange technical issues like Thunderbolt issues. I'm going to put a space right here. And we're going to save it because what, what we didn't learn our lesson from once, we're going to try again. All right, so for some reason the mirror is just not, there we go. Maybe I'm just having a stroke or being old, you guys. I just, I feel hot. That's not even the layer I want. It's this layer. I did want to tell machine that maybe, um, you know, same thing with kid ops. It would be cool if we could insert everything in the same collection inside the same layer. It's just getting crazy. The layers and the collections. I didn't want layers and collections to be together. It sounds good. It's not good. This thing is crazy. I mean, I use crazy to replace more, more egregious words, but I mean, it's the only way I can describe it. It's just crazy you guys. Like, I mean, it comes in handy when you're making corridors and like environments and stuff like that. Yeah, it's cool. But uh, like general working, you give everything these collections. I mean, I guess you have it limited. I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that. So this thing does not look like it's received the object from the other side. Let's try it again. There we go. And then we select this. And first we click that. Nope. So what we'll need to do is actually put a space in here. Uh, I've been trying to think of how we want to do additive mirror because I've been using mirrors for all sorts of strange things, like things that aren't even for mirrors, you know, like um, using it as like a holder for preventing the sort from grabbing things and resorting them type of stuff. like you can do some interesting things with the mirror while it, while it's turned off. Um, you know, I did do that video about phantom modifiers. You know, I was hoping more people would have, um, gotten into that and tried some stuff, but it made radial arrays, but that opens up some more possibilities. That I haven't even gotten into yet. I mean, I got a video where I was modeling, um, a small piece but I was keeping everything connected to the same modifier so that way everything could be dynamically adjusted I'll need to um, do another one of those sometime but I think that sort of thing is pretty fun so this thing's looking good it's looking as good as it's gonna look just kidding and we open up and we have our uh, have our fuel rods. I'm going to select everything. We're just going to move it to layer one because it's just easier. And let's select this thing. And we're just going to alt select that ring. And under material. So, God, excuse me if it sounds like I've been talking smack about tools in here. I mean, I feel that pointing out these things and, and at least letting y'all know that we are aware of them is, is probably better than denying their existence, you know, like a Chernobyl incident. Um, so we move this thing on the Y, but also I like doing these videos to show you guys how, how I work and, and give you guys little, little adventures to go on. So this shape, Looks a little shiny. I've, I've just been kind of thinking about it. 
let's look at this. There we go. So that actually looks cool. So I was gonna make a stage the way, the way I normally do, but then I remembered that we do stages differently now. So I'm gonna, we'll just take this plane and we're just going to bevel this back corner, maybe that far, and then convert it to a curve after selecting it, of course, convert it to a curve and we'll um, shift a at another curve circle and we'll select our beveled plane curve in our circle and we are set. So the rest is just a uh, story we'll be talking about later, but we do see that we do want to get some fine adjustment in there. So this has been something I've been pondering is how can we make it absolutely perfectly get the center. So next time we'll figure out that battle. Also we'll select the curve and press press two to give it 64 segments, make it a lot more dense. And using alt B to slice it, you know, we can look at like a half pipe and actually deal with this thing for a moment without the stage being in our way. That's the only problem. I wish I could make a stage that transformed when you went into perspective, you know, you would look at it in camera, it'd look great, you know, and you jump out of view and it would just jump into like maybe a half pipe. Just throwing ideas out there. So we take a look at what we have here. And seems kind of dark. We'll save. Also. Let's look at this thing. I wonder what's happening with this curve. see can we put some modifiers on this to simplify it I'm holding shift while I drag it back to see what can be done here Makes me wish we had a um, remove doubles modifier. It's just kidding. Um, let's see, it's like better off. And we go back in, it just looks like a slight little dot there, which I can live with. Um, just wanted to not have a hole under the scene, but that's something I'm going to be uh, contemplating for my next video is how can we get that to be exactly the way we want it. So I'll select this and press control T because old habits die hard. It doesn't work. We'll just, um, make track, track to constraint. We'll select this object, turn on the shadow, jump this up to a hundred Watts. I lied a thousand. Instant regret, Alt V, EVHQ, and we'll put one light here and set this one down to 30. You know, I'm no lighting expert, but sometimes I, I remember values that worked out well for me. And this isn't one of those cases. And we'll actually change this light into a rectangle.
All right, and let's turn it off. And we've spent about an hour in here goofing off. I'm gonna bring in a radiance map and just kill that up. I would need to look at the scene to know that now it encompasses everything. And also bring in a um, reflection cube map, kill that up. You know, what else can we bring in here? Also, it would be nice to add a driver that made it where we could turn the lights up and down. But the goal was to create a spherical where there would be like a retractable awning revealing lights underneath. So I'll save the pulsing lights for another time. But with that, this video has already been an hour. So we'll wrap it up from here. And I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you all next time.